Good day everyone, welcome back. So here we have Tamiya's M1A1 Abrams with the 120mm gun. If you may all remember, Tamiya has quite the line of Abrams tanks from the M1 with the 105, the A1 which is this kit, the A1 with the mind flow, the M1A2 which is Operation Iraqi Freedom, and the A2 with the tusk. So as always, with inbox reviews, we'd be taking a look at the sprues, the parts, and I would give some feedback and comments along the way. So without further ado, let's get started. So before I dive into these parts, I would like to mention that Tamiya did not add the anti-slip surface on the Abrams. Now, if we're going to compare it to Academy's M1A2, one of my previous builds, as you can see here, the Abrams is supposed to have this anti-slip coating, um, mostly around the upper hull and the turret. As you can see, this part right here, also these. This one is an exemption, but overall there should be the anti-slip coating, as well as here on the turret. You can see the parts where there are no anti-slip coatings and the weld marks but overall there should be the anti-slip coating so out of the box it does not have but there are ways online uh, you could go check that out there are ways for you to make your own anti-slip coating to make the model accurate so coming in closer you could see that Tomia did a fairly good job of detailing the surface you could see here the hatches, the panels, and also the bolts and the grills coming down around the front. You could see some fair detailing there. And the turret, you could also see that the, um, the commander's periscopes are already molded in. As compared to other parts, especially the clear parts for this kit, you would have the clear plastic sheet. But overall, this is for the first sprue. Now the second set would consist of these. First off, we have the bustle racks. These are for the sides of the turret. And these two would go together and form the rear bustle rack. Also, these ones here would be the stowage boxes found on the sides of the turret. This one right here would be the auxiliary power unit which is found at the back of the Abrams. And over here you could see the loader's figure. Let's focus that in. Over there you could see the loader's figure. It's fairly detailed as you can see he also has like this face mask. This other sprue has the side skirts here and also the entire back panel with the exhaust area. The 120mm gun, as you can see it's molded in two pieces so you would have to get rid of that seam line in the middle. Next we have the hatches for the commander, the driver and also the loader. Here are the mantlet parts right there and then we have the ammo box stowage items here these would be the parts for the ammo box we have here the machine guns on top of the turret this is the 50 cal and here's the 762 millimeter gun which is for the loader and more ammo boxes over here and yeah, overall these other parts would be for varying items around the turret. Also you have a storage item of a spare road wheel and some containers right here. And this one would be the cover for this optic right here. Let's go back to the M1A2 Abrams. Should be this thing right here. So. For the kit, for the M1A1, it's just covered. Next, we have the road wheels. 
as you can see they're all solidly detailed it's already there and to attach this you'd have the polycaps which i'd be showing later and you have the cables right here which go on the side of the turret the drive sprockets also the return rollers oh and these parts would be the mounting points for your return rollers here we have the lower hull as you can see the torsion bars or the suspension arms are already molded in so that takes off a lot of assembly in the tank and you can see here that Tamiya did retain their part for motorization so you can just go ahead and fill these out if you want simple one piece tub right here fair amount of detailing and yeah that's about it here we have the tracks as you can see right here and for attaching these Tamiya would want you to basically insert it inside insert it inside and then the excess would come out this and you just basically melt it into place so yeah um fairly simple construction for the tracks and the lower hull lastly we have the mesh which tamiya um suggests to use for the bustle rack the rear of the turret and also the poly caps for you to hold the road wheels in place a screw and a nut for securing the gun into the turret and make it movable and this is the clear plastic that i mentioned earlier the one that's used for most of the optics we have the decal sheet over here as you can see different markings um some of them would belong to a unit that's colored in the nato tricolor scheme while the rest would be in desert scheme and if i'm not mistaken good for operation desert storm before i end with the manual here are some of tamiya's add-ons especially this tech tips you can see just some um, basic tips on how to detail and build your model then over here is the manual you can see a little background in various languages and coming around you have the um, paint call out then construction for the road wheels the lower hull the apu as i mentioned earlier the driver's hatch and the upper hull detailing then the attachment and whatnot and here as you can see they use a screw and the nut to secure the gun in place and make it elevate and depress. So yeah, that's basically it for this tank. And as you can see, um, yeah, not, not much to go about the turret. Just add on all those parts there, the boxes, the hatches, and the cable right here on the side the machine guns then the final attachment and as you can see you can take liberties by adding the crew members and stowage items you also have here the painting for the crew members both in desert version and the nato version and around the back you can see markings for units you have the first armored division and it does note that there would be a different decal um, callouts here so 
it's either like company A, if I'm not mistaken, company A or company B. So you would just have to look at what you're placing. And here's for the NATO version as well with the third armored division. And on the next few episodes of the inbox review, I'd be taking a look at the M1 Abrams, the 105, and the M1 A2 OIF. So that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a thumbs up. But if you didn't, leave a thumbs down. And let me know down in the comments below if you like this tank, whether or not you have it, completed it, or any feedback in general. So as always, keep safe, take care, and enjoy modeling. Till next time, goodbye.